It is high. Voicemails. It is far. Voicemails. It is gone. Talking Nights Voicemail Show. What is good, y'all? What is good? How are you guys doing today? Yankee fans and invites. What is going on? We're here to hear you guys. Of course, this is the show that is run by you, for you, and by you. How are you? 908-845-5792. I am Joe's McFly. That is BBZ. D. BBZ. BBZ. When Zach <sighs> Two weeks in a in. row. Message. Zach. <laughs> got Alex Grab in the grappler's corner. He's right it's here. Grapful. You see him right here? He's grapful. Very grateful. Very grateful. And we have your voicemails, of course. How you guys doing? Joe's, I'm doing well. Yanks won a game after losing a game the, Yanks the are, worst way. Yanks are trying my patience, dog, with the worst team in baseball. Like, of obviously, it was a long time of, uh, of a lot of steps back. And as they've started to come out of this a little bit, not all the way out, but... It's felt like a lot of like two steps forward, a step back. Yeah. Like oh, the losses they do have are like pretty brutal. Right. So they get they they find a way to win win a bunch of games, but those are those can become heart attack type games, a la the that Rangers finale. Um mm. so it's been a stressful time watching these Yanks. Even last night. Up uh, were they up for nothing at one point? Uh and it gets should have been so much more. End. Should have been so much more. All right, let's go. Let's run the voicemails. Uh, first, we have a special guest that did not leave a voicemail, but left a video mail for the voicemail app. Mm. Here's our boy. First video voicemail. BBD and Joe is a big fan of the show. This isn't a voicemail, but I know BBD and team will figure it out. Um, Juan Soto. 25 years old, now at 193 home runs. That's number nine all time mm. on that list um, by the age of 25. Where does he end up? Where does he end up? I mean, is, is 600 out of the question in his career? Thank you, guys. Joe's, you're the greatest Elden Ring player in that office. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. All right, peace. Behold, dog. Yes. Mm. Thank you so much for the elder. I mean, yeah. appreciate that. He helped me for, through my Elden Ring run. He did. First and foremost, thank you, Courage, for calling. Thank you, good, Jack Courage. If you don't friend. know who he is, I mean, what rock you've been under, but he is the man. The man. Uh, all you Fortnite kids out there Fortnite should kid. know who he is. Uh, how many homers does Juan Soto end with? And so... Mm. At 25. He's at, he's at 25. He's... He's got 193. So, so we can call that 200. We could, let's call it 200. Let's, let's just say at the end of this year he'll have gotten to 200. If I think that's let's let's hope fair yes. for right now. And even if he's not exactly there, more or less, so 600 would be 400 more math. I got a 35 on the math ACT, so mm. I, I know that I was in gifted class. Um, so per 162. His career's been to 35 homers per 162 pace. Now, he hasn't... I don't know how his career high is only 35 entering this year. Right. 600 has to be on the table, I guess, is the overall point. 600, if he stays... Well, you know like what's funny? Yankees I think he's going to get, like, a 15-year contract, potentially. With so the Yankees. With the Yankees. Hmm. And that would mean I mean, 15 more years of, let's call it 30 a year, short porch, would be 450 more homers. No. And that, 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 so that's some wiggle room even with, even like accounting for like one injury, maybe there's like a down year, maybe like he turns 32 and has a bad time and has to, you know, change his change his diet or something as he he enters his mid thirties, but he goes off. He gets a few more compiler years. There's some wiggle room there to, to get to right around six hundred. I think he needs a fifty bomb year, and I think he might get it today this year. He could get a. 50 That's bomb also year true. 
<laughs> like I'm accounting for 600s in play with wiggle room, and that's before accounting for he might be getting better. He came <laughs> up at age, what, 19? He 19. debuted at 19. 116 games in his age 19 season. Who's somebody else that came up at 19? Did Rod come up at 19? I think Alex Rodriguez may have come up at 19. You got to look at his baseball Alex reference. Rod Rodriguez. Now, he, now, he's also a July birthday. He debuted in his age 18 season. Okay. Technically. I think that's close. Like, it's not. Like, obviously, A-Rod has some big homer years. Like, at age 25, A-Rod had already had three 40 homer seasons and a 50 homer season. So, A-Rod's ahead of him homer-wise. A-Rod was, was more of a home run hitter. At right. the end of A Rod's age twenty five season, he had two hundred forty homers, but he finishes with almost seven hundred. And then Griffey would be Griffey's a good comp, but Griffey got Gr- her, and Griffey had Griffey had a couple of years. fifty homer years. Like what? What had he done by twenty five though? Twenty five. There's two forty homer years, and his first injury year. I so want per one sixty two, per one sixty two, Griffey. Was hitting at a 33 homer pace. He came up at 19. Came, he came up at 19, 33 homer pace per 162 over that time, which is less than what Soto does. Like Soto is. You a know career. what? I'm looking at his homers 16, 22. Oh, wow. I think they might be closer by their age 25 season than we think. Then he takes off. I mean,. His 96 season, he has... Talking Griffey. Yeah, Griffey. So, let me see. He has... Griffey goes on like a five-year run after that. That's insane. And gets me very excited about Juan Soto in Yankee Stadium. Because he hasn't... Soto has not entered his prime yet. No. No. Uh, Because those... After 95, after Griffey's age 25 season, he goes on a run from ages 26 to 30. uh, Averaging 50 homers a year. Hitting at a 53 homer... Per 162 pace. Uh, the raw numbers are 49, 56, 56, 48, 40. Those were his like biggest homer years. Hey, so Soto, hey. Soto can get even more ahead of the pace. Hey, Soto, right now, 193 homers. Griffey, after his age 25 season, 189. Yeah. So he's, at, he's ahead of Griffey's he's pace. He's ahead right of now. Griffey's pace, technically. But Griffey, of course, had the 49, 56, 56, 48, 40. Those numbers. years are crazy. Those years are crazy. There, but I think there's going to be a next step for Soto. There could be a next power step for Soto. Like a, like he, he's about to enter his physical prime. This is exciting. Courage, thank you so much. For this. this is like really I like exciting. thinking about this. Because if I'm Scott Boris, I'm, I can use a Griffey career to project almost Mm -hmm. Soto hitting wise and then just kind of put him out there and say this guy is actually I mean healthier hasn't missed time he hasn't missed any time like even before because even even during those before age 25 years like Griffey looks like two at least two like years that there were injuries yeah like like Soto had a strike shortened season as well and remember Soto also has the 2020 2020 he has a 2020 away, take away. That's that's so he's know. way ahead of the pace, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think 600 is on the table, Pop, for sure. I don't know. I don't, which side uses this for leverage more? Is he catching? Wait. Like when it when it comes down to it, I think some side's going to try to use this as a negotiating chip. Because like Soto, it's easier for you to get to a gaudy home run total. If you play your home games at the Yankee Stadium moving forward, I know he's not like a pure like porch abuser guy. Like Jazz's mm. swing is like made for the porch. Soto's isn't, but he will get more homers playing in Yankee Stadium. His game will age well because he knows how to walk. He so knows how to, he will always be able to walk. He'll always be able. He he'll has like the contact, the you know, ability. Maybe there's a late career evolution where he does sell out a little bit more for power, sort of like the the late career DH Mike Trout we've been dreaming of on Talking Baseball for a couple of years, um, which maybe we're approaching, by the way. But 
I wonder if the Yankees <laughs> try to through the media talk about how like Soto should stay here to, to be able to rack up homers. Probably more Wait. likely that probably more likely that they think they can get that anywhere and I think they would try to use that as leverage against the Yankees. Be like, don't you want a 600 homer hitter to be in pinstripes? Yeah. I think I'm the, getting too caught up in the free agency as every conversation with Soto kind of becomes. A good question would be, and they do have a 600 uh, homer hitter already in A Rod. Yeah. But they will. Hey, Bruce. Hmm. The question really is can he catch Pujols? Ooh. Which Pujols, Pujols has 703 homers. Will he be the. The Dominican with the most homers. Oh. That would be awesome. Um, Pools had, Pools had so a, many a tremendous start years. to his career, and then he tailed off late. And Pools is for the St. Louis years. There's one, two, three, four, five. And he stood six, very seven, healthy. Eight. He had, just in the St. Louis years, he had nine years over 35 homers. But he was older. He was a little older. He starts at 21. And that's, these are including some physical prime years. Mm-hmm. He had a 40 over year with LA, huh? That's cool. Yeah. Huh. This is interesting. I I think I think 600 is, is a very good, like, bet he gets over this. Yeah. I think 600's definitely in play. It becomes... 700 is like, I'm very are we banking on a... a a home run surge there. I think him picking a team Yankees in front of, you know, and him, pit, you know, having good protection judge for the rest of his career. <laughs> Soto, uh, <laughs> you can be able to kind of lock in and be the top you Dominican power hitter of all time. Pop in pinstripes. What? Boris, I'm doing your job. Whoa. Yankees. I'm doing yours too. Thank you so much for the voicemail. Appreciate that. Thank you. Kurt. That was a good one. Good That's, conversation piece. Joe's just good. out here doing the Lord's I'm ex- work. I'm so excited thinking thinking about that number. Oh yeah. All right. Well, who else we got? Yeah, I hate I hate to take away from the good mood, but we uh we have a couple of voicemails I want to play back to back about the uh the start of this White Sox series. Sure. All right. Hey, I'm sorry. I know you were feeling rough about that pitiful display on Monday, but Look, the thing is, as long as you take out the Orioles, Guardians, Astros, Twins, Royals, Red Sox, Mariners, Rays, Tigers, Rangers, Blue Jays, Angels, Athletics, Dodgers, Phillies, Brewers, Diamondbacks, Padres, Braves, Mets, Cardinals, Giants, Cubs, Reds, Pirates, Nats, Marlins, Rockies, the White Sox aren't even that bad. Go Orioles. And the follow- Orioles? I don't know, but to follow that one up. What's up, guys? Jack in L.A. Uh, lose ten run- by 10 runs to one of the worst teams in Major League history. They're deliberately asked after the game, is this a wake-up call? They flat out said no. It's a normal day. It's a normal day with this team. Getting bodied by the fucking Mets is a normal day. Getting bodied by the Boston fucking Red Sox, it's a normal day. Nobody's concerned. No one has any fucking urgency in that clubhouse. It's a top-down fucking cancerous attitude. It needs to be ridden. Facts! If Hal's not going to do anything about Cashman, about Boone, and that apathetic fuck throughout the organization, sell the fucking team! Fuck! Oh. You ain't wrong, Pop. You're not wrong. My only, and I I understand what they're trying to say, and you know what? I think you say that to yourself (laughs) to keep yourselves in the mentality of the grind of 162, saying, yo... This is just one of 162. You don't say that publicly, man. You just don't. Because all of your... Mm. Everybody's thinking, this team, you got to sweep. If you're serious about anything, this is the team you got to sweep. I know it's baseball. Trust me. I know. Beebs knows. The fans probably know. But we don't want to hear you after you had a horrendous loss. They beat nobody by double digits, Beebs. If... Come on. You cannot give me that. In the in the post game, you keep that for yourself and the clubhouse guys. Yeah. This is just I, one one sixty two. I get it that internally they don't you you don't want to let the like one game like that really bog you down. And I even get that like as much as I felt like man, it'd be really good to just take care of business and sweep this team. Like you like 
I can be okay with having lost a game to them. That game was more than just a loss. It was losing by double digits, their biggest margin of victory all season, the most runs they've put up in a game all season. All, all that. When you had like a good pitcher on, on the on the heel, no pun intended. Pun was really intended. Um, th- like th- that's not a game that they can't. That there should have been any chance of losing by ten, right? And they did. They went up early and had a chance to go up big early, and they didn't cash in on any of those chances. You walked eleven times. Almost everybody in the lineup walked. Everybody who got who started this game got on base multiple times by my quick glance like you did the hard part after that you just gotta like play the baseball and you could have they could have easily been up four or five to two like even giving the white Sox the two first inning runs they scored you could have been up early enough to just break their spirits early. somebody coming out and i whether it's i wash or whatever it is somebody coming out and saying you know we're taking every game serious and losing this game. You know, we're trying our goal is to win the World Series and we cannot have losses like this. Tomorrow we'll come out and be better. How easy is that to say? No, it's just you one know, to one sixty two. Get I'm, your feet up. <laughs> I'm not even asking you to believe it, but just just tell us that you that like, yeah, you're upset you lost this game like that. You don't even have you can be lying to me that about whether you are or aren't, but like but like it's such a tough look, especially like you know what this fan base is and how the this media market works. And you can't say that game and just talk about it being just one of one sixty two externally mm. uh immediately after. The the like even when like like I believe in the urgency being there in, in that clubhouse, in that locker room. I believe in them to to actually have that urgency in them. Uh, this year, they've shown that more than they have in previous years. But they can't get in. They can't like not get in their own way about like right saying they they don't like they don't like to admit that there's any extra urgency and it, and, and for them to keep doing it this year when they've when they've shown through their actions that they do take this year a little more seriously and have a bigger emphasis on one year. They've, they've shown that and all their off season moves reflected that, um, by getting these guys that have one year left. And, uh, while you have a few guys on your own already on the team that have just one year left, like you knew coming into this year, they were, they were pretty all in on this year. There's it's more than anything else. It's just annoying to, for them to not speak with the urgency. Even if I believe that that's in there, that's it. Uh, so like, listen, it's a little bit like, like I'm, it's a little bit like, I'm just asking for lip service on that guys. The game happened. Everybody knows the schedule of the last two months remaining. Okay. You need to understand. And I know that it's baseball. Like I said, and you, every baseball team, you got to have that respect. Let's be serious. You're the Yankees. You have the best record in baseball right now. I got to keep reminding myself of that. You got the best record in baseball right now. You cannot be losing to the White Sox any game, you know? And even if you do lose the game, it needs to feel like it was like, yo, this is this is a big loss that we can't be, you know, we can't be doing this. And that's it. That's all you got to That's the only attitude you got to display publicly. Whatever you do privately is none of my business. I don't really care. Whatever. You guys are so right for feeling that way because I feel the way. You got it. All right, next one. Dude, I just want to cry. Why can't we have nice things? Why can't the Yankees just have nice things? It's not that hard. I just want a player to stay healthy. Someone shows up. Same thing with Dominguez last year. I'm going to cry, man. Can this please stop? Mm. This needs to stop. I'm done. I'm fucking... I'm done. Yeah. Mm. Um, Obviously talking about was, the Jazz injury. Yeah, he's referring to Jazz. And uh, it sucks because Jazz brought great energy to the team, and now he yeah. has the UCL I don't know what is with the UCL. I don't know what's going on with the UCL, but he has the UCL. Uh, By the situation. time this is out, maybe we have some more clarity there. But hopefully, um, seems like seems like he's out a while. Yeah, 
Hopefully, hopefully it's better and he doesn't end in Tommy John or whatnot. Um, like con- context clues, these and obviously this is just me assuming, but it feels like yeah, it feels like they're he's been told by the first doctor the, like that's probably what's necessary, and they're asking the second to make sure and he wants he wants a second opinion. That's the way this is reading. It feels like that's what's behind happening behind the scenes, but that's just vibes. <clears throat> Even if. Okay, he doesn't need it, and he's rehabbing. I I can't say I know for sure that he's back for the playoffs. I would imagine that that's on the table. Mm. And and especially it being his non-throwing arm, I, I think that that's fine, and he'd be able to play through that if it's not bad enough that it needs surgery, yeah. I'd assume. If it is, the silver lining is it's his non-throwing arm happening now like i i think he'd be good to go for spring training so silver lining there if it is the worst case scenario Mm. but the the point of that the caller made in that we all generally feel is that like how did this happen again (laughs) right we like even beyond okay the the trade deadline guys they've had trevino lou trevino missed over a year, year and a half now with, with Tommy John. F. Ross has been out since the end of 22 with Tommy John in the back stuff. Uh, Montas, they, they got him hurt. They, they acquired him hurt, and he and he misses all of the next year. That's the one that they, like, that like the Yankees really messed up because they knew he was hurt when they brought him in. Mm. Uh, even But even beyond guys they traded for, like Benintendi, the freak wrist thing happened, whatever. Uh, even beyond guys they traded for. Like last year, obviously diff- a lot of things different about that situation, but around, you know, we're getting close to the time that last year they brought up Jason Dominguez and he comes up, is awesome and exciting and looks like mm. he's going to give us a September that's worth watching for eight games. And then out of nowhere, he's he's just gone. It's kind of reflexive of that where it's like reminiscent of that where it's like I, I was like, damn, it's like – Really excited about this new dynamic to the team. Obviously, that team, it was like, maybe if Dominguez is going to play like this and Judge is playing like this, they go on they go on a run that's fun. They can get back in the playoff mix, maybe. This year, it's like I was believing in championship-level stuff, which isn't out of the picture, but when the guy that, as he came over, changed the vibes that much and plays, even beyond the results, just plays a fun brand of baseball to watch, um, that is just a gut punch. It is. Hopefully he gets better and then we don't have to worry about it. And, but it just sucks. I just, I never like people sliding head first into, um, into home. It just never, I just feel like it never pans out the way you want it to. Um, so it's tough that it happened on that kind of play in a situation that mm-hmm. like ultimately didn't matter. But like, that's that's a little bit of baseball. It's a little bit life. <laughs> like, right? Just, that's just that's when that kind of stuff happens sometimes. Um, yeah. That's tough. I mean, he had been hitting so well. Three. <laughs> if the, if this is it for this year, fourteen games, sixty one plate appearances as a Yankee, uh, three sixteen batting average, three fifty one on base, seven oh one slug for a one dot oh sixty two OPS. Uh, which is it puts him in the same tier, more or less, as uh, in the in the same general vicinity as like what Soto's done all season. Obviously, it's not Jazz, been Jazz his whole year, but since coming here, he's been another Soto. Hilarious! Uh, the seven homers he had mm. in fourteen games. Hadn't thought about that number. Like Jazz has been really good. I know we just. We just started to see, like the inexperience at third show a little bit on you know a handful of plays. So it was like, starting, but he was still athletic. Like he was still athletic, and like I was taking a lot more good than bad out of seeing him at third. Yeah. Like, like even with like the the honeymoon phase of the of the third base play being kind of over. Absolutely. Uh, even with that, like he was hitting like crazy. Yeah. Same number of homers as Trent Grisham in. 
fifth of the games he's played. Yeah. Less a sixth. Um Oh. That's just it, it that one really was a blow. Get that better, was a real Jazz. Blow. Uh, hopefully Jazz is is good to go. They can they can just rehab this and hopefully it being the non throwing arm it'll help in any event, but hopefully mm. hopefully that means he can like still do what he's gotta do. Um if he if he's gonna be able to play again this year. Next update's obviously important there, but he's already on the IL, so. Yeah. Well, our next caller uh, is still optimistic on the remainder of the season, and he gives his reasons why. Hey, what's up, BBD, Pop? What's up, uh, Pop? You know, just thinking big picture, Yankees World Series chances, and on one hand, it's kind of a bummer that the Yankees aren't taking more advantage of this window with Judge and Soto. Um, but on the other hand, the AL is pretty wide open this year, more than in the past. It always felt like the Astros were the mm. team that we had to be, and we still do. I still think, you know, we're going to meet them in the playoffs and we got to go through them, but the AL teams, they all have huge flaws, and so while the Yankees have yeah. flaws, and, you know, we see every Yankee game, we see every flaw that they have, a lot of teams have a lot of flaws as well, and I still think that this team is a real shot to get to the World Series and take that home. Definitely. Oh, yeah. And this year, across baseball, like in both leagues, there aren't any, there isn't that juggernaut team, at least by record. No team, I believe no team is on pace to win more than 96 games. Somebody probably mm. will beat that number, but currently no team on pace for more. The Yankees, as bad as they've played for like two months now, um, have our half game back of the best record in all of baseball. They still have their division lead. Like, think about how scary the Orioles are, at least on paper, and how bad the Yankees have played. And, like, the Orioles really played pretty much just as bad over over that time. Obviously, like, a little better, but the Yankees are still ahead of them. Uh, even the Phillies are really going through it. Right. The Dodgers haven't felt like the Dodgers this right. year. They they were missing Mookie for a long time. It and, seems like they might be in go mode now, but and it's weird. Listen, the Yankees have the best record right now. Well, I I, I think the the Guardians technically have the best record in baseball right I now. Think seventy one and forty nine. Yeah, Guardians are game up in the loss. The Yankees are seventy one and fifty, but and you know the Dodgers are seventy one and forty nine, right? But it, I have to keep reminding myself that nobody has more wins than the Yankees right now. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, the Yankees have 110 in run differential. Um, you know, it, They have the best run differential. Which... The best run differential. I got to keep reminding myself of those things. But it doesn't, if you're a Yankee fan that watches the game and watches the games every day, day in and day out, it doesn't. It feels like we're like an underdog sometimes. This might be Yankee stuff because if, if if Cohen hears me talking about this, he'd be like, oh, man, look at Yankee fans crying again, dog. I can't believe it, dog. I wish in San Diego I had your problems, dog. That's how Ryan Cohen sounds. That's and I'm how like, he's oh, always dude, sounding. Relax, huh? <clears throat> That's how he's always sounding. Joes, look at the bullpen <clears throat> ERA. We're number five in baseball. Why are you crying? If you watch the games, the bullpen ERA and what I'm seeing, just the, the math ain't mathing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, but I think that hopefully the Yankees get it together in terms of like just having the consistency in their wins and having the consistency in their games that you know you know what to expect. And that's all I ask for. Yeah. The, Yanks, um Going Yanks. Dev obviously like Jazz got punch, but like there isn't the team like running away with it or that like is obvious they just can't like stack up with. Uh even if if we're going going about the rest of it as if Jazz is out, like is a they they still have, can beat any of these teams. Um and they're they're still probably better than these teams. By by record they are better than everyone but Cleveland and, and the Dodgers. So right. 
you got to play the games. Um, and there, there's there are plenty of things to be optimistic about, even even with the recent bad news. Yeah, indeed. That is the way I like to live. Anything can happen in October. Play the games. Yeah, I just just win the division and then we'll figure it out. Division would be huge. Hey, what's up, fellas? What's good? Um, what are your thoughts on Oswald Peraza? Um, I mean, he's been hot for about a month now in AAA. I mean, I'm calling right as we get this Jazz Chisholm news. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I guess, what are your thoughts of, do you want him to get a serious run this year? And do you think it'll actually happen? Great question. And at the point of this recording, Perazzo has been uh, called up. Yeah, it sounds like he he is the move. Yeah, um, he was called up. Um, he has been playing really well in um, in Triple A. He's been. Let me look at here. I think in the last. Where are we? I believe like in his last couple like of games, he's been destroying the ball. Let me see. He's August, been good for some for an extended run now. He has. He has. So he's getting his chance. I think he should get some run at third. At least like get it, get him in some games versus lefties. If um, he can hit lefties. If he can hit lefties, if he can pinch run. What um, are his splits down there? Let me see. You look his, on the splits. I'll find a good butter knife. Yeah, his splits... Oh, man, he's still, what is this? All right, well, he's been struggling the whole year, but his splits versus righties, he's better against righties than what he is lefties. What's going on with that? Yeah. He, hmm. Four trying homers. To find, trying to find the best butter knife here since, uh, let's go Friday since 212 June. versus lefties. June it's June nineteenth. He's batting two ninety six with an eight seventy six OPS. He had a really good July. One twenty eight WRC plus. Let's go from the start of July, two seventy three with an eight seventy nine OPS. Um, August he has a, a really high OPS. He's a one dot two three OPS. There's a chance his on base that, percentage is good, so he's been walking a lot more. Yeah, there's a there's a chance that. Hey, as bad as of a year overall as Peraza's had, some amount of that is he had a pretty big shoulder injury coming out of spring training, and they're and required some time to adjust to that. Just catching up, and like catch up, get his timing back, feel right. Like there's there's a chance that that's what that struggle period really was, because obviously his numbers the first like two like full oh, months wow. of this season were. Very bad. Yeah, look at this. The first half of the season, I have it right here. He's he was hitting 180 with a 323 on base percentage. So I I do like that he's walking a lot. He's walked this year. I I don't know the full scope of it. It could like, be a triple A thing. Don't know the full scope of his swing decisions and all that. And triple A, I think has right. the has the robo ump situation that I think boosts mm. a lot of guys' walk rates. But that's still a very high like walk rate. That that's. That's still like good. Two eighty one slug. Like even, even accounting for like some of that's robots. Like not all of it is. And he had a six oh four OPS the first half. Wow. Second half, now thirty seven games. So it's and the other one was thirty five games. Thirty seven games here. Second half, two ninety five, three eighty one, five eleven, and eight ninety two OPS. So he's been clearly better. Yeah. Um, the second half of the season in the minor leagues right now. So good for him. Getting better and better as the as the years gone on. His position Huge. is third base right now, not even shortstop. So His position's third base. I'd say give him run at third base. I know Peraz, uh, uh, Cabrera, sorry, has been playing well when games uh -huh. that he starts or participates in, but I think he should get time. I think Cabrera should Cabrera's probably not, to get time. And Cabrera is not. Really good versus lefties, anyway. Right, like that shouldn't take any way anything from him. So if we're, we can at least start with, like Peraz. I guess it'd be Peraz and DJ on the corners versus left-handed pitchers, and see where that gets us. Peraz has the ability to be an actual like really really good third baseman. So maybe there's a 
a good defensive a plus. He's he's a defensive sub. He's a pinch run possibility. Uh, whether that's for DJ or Rice or even Glaber or whatever, like at whatever infielder in the at, towards the end of a game, like Peraza has all the tools. Um, and he's got speed. So he's got some speed. There's like you know I'm not gonna bank on anything out of him because that would be irresponsible with just about any prospect, but especially one who has gotten who has had this much of like a struggle this year. Like it would just be irresponsible for me to put any expectations there. But I'm gonna be like excited to check him out whenever he gets. Hundred like percent. He should start. get. He should get extended run beeps. I I, I think. think he should at least be able to get like starts versus lefties over these next however long Jazz is out. And like nobody else has run away with it or has earned more time. Am I giving him right the righty now. starts too? I mean, I can. If he, if he starts with hitting those lefties, I'll I'll give him some righty starts. They have, they in theory, have like in theory, Rice and and Oswaldo deserve the bulk of starts versus right-handed pitching right now. But if I'll, there's a day they want to give Volpe a day, I only if they're say looking just for a day to give Glaber a day. I only say it because I feel like Peraza was a big enough prospect in the organization that I feel like he should get extended run. And he I should. think that... And, and in theory, like there, there's still a chance he's the second or third baseman next season. If they... Sure. If he's impressive this year and in spring training and they're letting Glaber go and they, and they re-sign Soto and want to go cheap, like there's a, a more than fair chance he starts the year... There's a I, chance he starts the year as like one of the guys, or him and his wall and his wall though are platooning as the guys. Whatever. I say you see what you got. I wouldn't even platoon. I give him jazzes at bats. Give him jazzes at bats, and then see what he does with it. I need I need to see what Peraza is, because yeah. I feel like there's too much where we're doing we're doing like platoons with kids, and it's like oh these guys are used to this guy's like. Uh, Top Yankee prospect, right? Let him play every day. I want to see what he does. You let Volpe play every single day. You what struggle or not? Yeah. You let him play every single day. Give Peraza the ABs continuously. He's not looking over his shoulder and whatnot. And let him play. Let's see what he does. His ceiling, I feel, could be higher than Cabrera's and yeah. than anybody else that could be play at third base. He, if he reaches mm -hmm. his potential, so give him the at bats. You know. He, <laughs> he's still young. He's only twenty four. I need to see what he's he is. He's still twenty four. He he still has a chance to be good. Like we got to see it, and he's got to earn it, and and all of that. And this year has obviously been one that, in a lot of ways, he'd he'd love to take back some of what this season mm -hmm. has been with the injury and the the dreadful start. Like, he has a chance to still be good. The tools all seem there. It seems like he's feeling really good and confident at the plate now. 100%. They should, they should at minimum get him as many starts as they can versus lefties and, and mix him in versus the righties. Because as much as I generally like what I've seen from Ben Rice and, and DJ's looked better and Oswaldo's been in a nice rhythm, none, none of them are, like, running away with it to such a degree that we can't find a lane for Peraza to get like a week, 10 days to play like seven of those games and show us what he can do. There's no reason he, he, he can't get like, get something like that. Yeah, for sure. And he's been kind of just for like three years now, he's been kind of waiting for the opportunity. He so he previously had deserved. Um, Peraza gives you the ability to, if you want to give Volpe some time off and not have to like feel like your your team's in a crunch, it you feels like they're it. gonna at minimum get Volpe a, a day soon. That's fine. Give Volpe so a day, that. but give give Peraza the majority of the time at third, so that that way he can get the ABs in and we can see what the hell he has. Let's get Peraza. it. Let's go. Playing mostly shortstop still. So yeah. Yeah, get him, get Volpe a day. Well, our, uh, our next call has to do with another young guy who's getting a lot of run lately. Hey, guys, my name's Vinny. My question for you is about uh, Austin Wells. Obviously, he's been on a great stretch offensively, but my concern is that he's getting played a bit too much 
Mm-hmm. I know he's young, and I also I'm not sure what the timeline for Trevino is, but do you think it'd be smart to give Narvaez a few more starts than he's getting now, or do you think Wells could handle the load that he's getting? Because it's just not normal for catchers to play this much. Uh, I love you guys, Jake. Suck. All right. Well, I'll tell you this: I love Austin Wells' ascension on this team. We knew that he can hit. Everything that everything about him feels earned. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, his playing time, his spot in the lineup where he's hitting, um, everything about him just feels earned, which is awesome. You love to see that because yes. nothing, you know, ev- nothing's given, everything is earned. Um, everything passes the eye test. Correct. Like what I will say is, if it he has been playing a lot right now, he's at what is he eighty two games? He's played, I think, like since. Trevino has gone down. He, uh, like nobody has played more innings than he has mm-hmm. uh, at, at catcher. I'm trying to see if there's a quick way for me to f- confirm that. Um, so he's been, he's been really playing. He has been really good. He's also really 25. Um, he's 25. Okay. I think we're gonna see him get continue to get about this workload um until uh until Trevi's back and then Trevi'll get cold days or, or versus lefty. Like he'll he'll take a chunk of starts out of Wells, but it will still be in like a spot that I think like we're still gonna be saying like, okay, Wells is like the starting catcher. Just Trevi will play more than Narvaez will. And at this point, it's like, well, we're let's get through these ten days and keep keep Wells going uh, before we're getting Narvi more than like one of those starts. And and I've liked what I've seen from Narvaez too. He looks like an option as a as MLB level catching depth. Um, but I, I don't I don't think there's going to be a major shift in Wells' playing time before Trevi comes back. And even then, I don't. I think for the rest of this year that you like need Wells. Let me play. read these numbers to you guys. Please read. Please and then read some let's numbers. see if that changes your perspective or not. Right? 151, 138, 143, 142, 137, 142, 143, 144. Right? What is that? Those are Jorge Posada's age mm. 29 through 36 um, age years. He was a five-time All-Star in those years. Wells is 25. He's all right. All right? Mm. I, I, I get it. You want to keep it. But if the <laughs> kid's productive, okay? yeah, You know what? If he's producing and you as a team get more big leads... You can take him out after like his third at bat. You can. Posada played. Okay. Jorge Posada played. And he played at a much older age. Like I said, 29 through 36. My man was crouching down there and his knee was not down on the dirt, which would have saved his knees even more. So yeah, let's not. Let's not, I get it, he's been playing, and we've been conditioned by what's been happening lately, and, you know, catchers play. Hey, even if, if, even if he plays 130-some-odd games, Biebs, that's still fine. He, if you ask Austin Wells, he's like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I'm 25. Like, honestly, I'm to, a, to a degree, like, they, they should, as an organization, like, take it upon themselves to, like, save him from himself a little bit, because I think Wells is always going to say he's good. Like, like you should get him some days, but like Jorge, I think a lot of, especially in that back half, like a lot of days that he wasn't catching, like he DH. Yeah, uh, he was. Uh, like he was that good of a back. Stanton's, Stanton's back now, so the DH yes. times aren't aren't as obviously there. But like, like Wells, they're they're going to need to do something like that uh, eventually. But look at all the games he's in. Because, I mean, that's that's wild to me. Even uh, if you go through those years, two thousand one, Posada caught a hundred and oh wait, here it goes. Oh, they have him here. They have the. the I misspoke slightly. Jorge didn't uh, DH 
all that much. Uh, it, most of his DH appearances came after age right. 36, but age 29. He, it looks like the days he caught. Looks like the days he did. Uh, he didn't start. He got into those games later, or uh, or they you know figure out another way to dance around it. But how many innings does played. Wells have? Wells has played. Uh, Wells. He's, I knew you had that. a lot of innings. He has played 619 innings this year. It's not that great. There, it was a pretty pure split between him and Trevi. Early. I don't want to compare to Posada here. Posada at age 29, 1,182 catcher innings. 30, 1,111, 1,191. 1165, 1102, 1107, no, uh, 1076, 1050, 1111. I mean, Posada has caught. He caught a lot. I think the lowest amount was that 2009 year. 2008 also, 234, mm. but they were trying to phase him out as a catcher. 2009, 785. He caught. He caught. He can catch, man. It's fine. If you're productive with the bat, you're in the lineup. Let's go. They need him. Let's go. I got one more because I think it's going to be fun, and I'm genuinely, genuinely curious of your guys' answers here. Sure. Okay. How's it going, guys? My name is Sean. Uh, hey, I just Sean. The question I have for you is, what moment in your lifetime made you think of, I want to be a Yankee fan, or what's the number one moment mm. of you have being a fan? Uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing to it. Thank you. Ooh, great question. Mm. Um, my moment. There's, there's two, there's two moments. One was in the ballpark. The other one was, like, just me growing up in the Bronx. So the first one was in, I think, ninety four, where the Yankees like. It, in this particular game, or 93, I'm not sure, but the Yankees got smacked in this particular game, but it was the first time I ever went to the stadium. And, you know, my uncle and my dad took me to the game, and I remember my uncle telling me, he's like, you see that field? Like, the best players in the world play on that field. And ever since then, I've just been, like, kind of, like, mm -hmm. in love with going to the ballpark and all that stuff. Where I got cemented as a Yankee fan was – the next year, my friends and I would always ride our bikes around the Bronx or whatever. And on a daily, we would go to uh, to Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium, the old Yankee Stadium, would have a walkway from the players' parking lot all the way to the you know to the stadium, and the and you see the players walk through, and that's pretty cool. And it's something that I feel like is missing uh, from this from the new stadium and whatnot, but. Anyway, you would have that, and you would know the players' cars. You know, mm. when players would come in. I know Jeter had his Jaguar at the time or whatnot. But I would uh, – and it, it wasn't the Jeter time or whatever it is. But I went in 95. I remember this. In 95, I went there with my bike, and I was trying to get my ball signed. And I don't – I'm not an autograph guy. I just, I'm just not. But I wanted to get my ball signed, but I wasn't able to from anybody. And Bernie came, uh, and he signed my ball. And um, I think he responded in Spanish. And I was surprised. And then that's when I found out that Bernie Williams wasn't black. He was Puerto Rican. I was like, whoa, that blew me away. <laughs> and so that was awesome. Um, that's when I, f I fell in love with the team. I was cemented from there uh, as a little kid. And then, you know. The rest was history. That was my that was my moment. That's awesome. That was, that was awesome. Try, I'm trying to think. There's like single mo like a lot like a lot of people like just Yankee family. Like it was yeah. just all, that's always what it was going to be. I was you know fa famously born nine months after the '96 World Series. So mm. it was also my parents' anniversary. Nice. Okay. So, so uh, like a that. Us not liking the Yankees was never, never an option. Never in the cards. I feel like some of the earliest memories I have watching, I feel like I remember, because I would have been really young because for, but I think I remember like live, like in my parents' room, watching Jeter fly into the stands. And I was like, that's sick. 
Mm. Um, and that's that's one of the earliest like plays I remember and being like, I think I'm like just in on this. Yes. Uh, like, oh, I really like this. Like, that's cool. And I'd like practice making like cool catches and stuff in the yard with my dad and and all of that. So, uh, wouldn't say wouldn't say like any any specific memory beyond that. As far as like locking me into like the Yankees or like liking baseball because of baseball Yankees family, mm-hmm. but. But yeah, that that is an early one for me. Yes. I remember like locking in. I remember watching the like oh four playoffs and stuff. Um, yeah, always just always been the Yanks. Awesome, that's good. Hello there. All right, that's all we got for today. Nice so. guys, thank you guys so much for leaving us some voicemail. Shout out to Courage. Oh, another thing, Courage told me this is about Verdugo, real quick, and this is something for you guys to sit on. Mm. Uh, he actually sent me a t- yo. Courage is like connected, bro. He sent me a message, and I didn't even look at this. And maybe we could look into this or not, but he said this is Verdugo. Alex Verdugo's batting average of 253 and 57 hits, 8 homers and 34 RBIs, 29 runs scored in the first 62 games of the season. After he crashed into that wall on June 5th, right? So since June 6th, he's been batting 222, 49 hits, only 2 homers and 16 RBI. So that's 55 games since June 6th. Do you think that there's something more to that? I think at one point, Jake and I were looking into like Verdugo and the wall stuff. And I think he stayed good for like 10 more days after that. Like, okay. I think, because I think that like first Fenway series. I want to rule that out game one of, stuff. That game one of Fenway, he goes three for five with the homer, mm-hmm. homer and a double. I think it's like after that that things start kind of falling apart, or like okay. in that Baltimore set. So I, th- I think he survived the crash. He into survived. The wall. I think he beat the the Minnesota crash into the wall allegations. Good, but it wasn't long after that that uh, that the slump started. Because I remember when we, I forget who brought it up to me, and Jake, the first time. Maybe somebody tweeted at him or something. Mm. But the we were we were in in this room. We were like, did. Did that start the Verdugo slump? Did he get a, you know. And we, like, and we, okay. So we looked into it because it sounded right. We were right. Like, that was around that time. Mm. But I think he was still good for a week or 10 days. Well, join us next week, guys. 908-845-5792. We are here for you. We'll see you next week, y'all. Great crap of voicemails. Great crap. Great it crap. Is crap. Voicemails. Try to match those it next week, far. guys. Voicemails. Voicemails. Voicemails.